You don't find many people who yeah, are yeah. deep into like this you know, sort of way of thinking. You know, you know what? Speaking of space, yeah. So I think because we've started already. Speaking of space, yeah. I had a mad thought the other day, yeah. So like, see how we've got like I think like we've got finite like fuel on Earth, right? Okay. If I'm if I'm correct, I've got two questions with that. You know. All right. Do you think yeah, we're fucking up our chances to explore space mm. by just kind of burning it and then we're gonna run out at one point and then we won't have a chance to do it? From like a technical perspective. Yeah, it's like if we're gonna run out of fuel, like how can we take off to space? Like how are we gonna human beings are very creative in the way we create energy. Mm. Like we'll run out of one, we'll just discover another one. Yeah. Well we we're very good at making stuff work when mm. but of course if you take that to the nth degree and we go all the way to the end then will there be a point where there's just nothing left? Potentially. Mm. Like at the moment, I think we're, 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 we're in the Kushti zone, you know, we still got enough. We're yeah, like, yeah. now we're like, oh, let's, let's look at what other options we got. Yeah, we're yeah. doing like wind and solar and stuff like that. But even that needs lithium. You need batteries mm. you need to actually find these stuff in the earth, like to create a battery. And, and, still and some, to, some of it's renewable, some of it isn't as well. So yeah, we talk about, we talk about like renewable energy, but, to be able to create renewable energy, they gotta do some unrenewable stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 good, but it's not it's not where it should be. Like yeah. it can be better, a lot better. So what about aviation as well. So then, what about planes? Like, what happens to planes? Like, is, do you think there's gonna be like electric planes? Like, I don't know. Once once batteries get good enough, yeah, things will start to happen. Yeah, yeah, that'd but be interesting. It's batteries as it is. It also depends on how whether human beings are willing to trust battery planes. Yeah, because batteries are. I mean, very, I mean, at one point they might not have a choice, though, right? It's like yeah, yeah. yeah the whole world's doing it. You can't be yeah. like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. It's like, just get yeah. on. Because if there's like, if there's no fuel to fill the plane. plane, it's like, what are you gonna fly with? You know what I'm saying? That's it's true. Like, yeah. From that perspective as well, yeah. Because yeah. we will run out of fossil fuels. Yeah. We will. I wonder if we're gonna run out of war. I've heard the end of time. That's the battle. Mm. It's not about fuel. It's about water because that is genuinely a imagine people resource. are going to go to war or i war. i genuinely yeah. bro, from what i've heard like the prophecies and that like, conspiracy theories and whatever yeah, yeah but there's this one that i've heard that's always stuck with me i don't know where i heard it don't ask but apparently at the end of time the th there's three there's going to be three sons of a king from saudi arabia who are mm. going to start a war over water and like wow. the whole world is going to go to Richard and saudi arabia is quite dry as well just in general, <laughs> yeah, so. just in general. but like yeah. i think the war on water is more likely than the war yeah. Where do you get the water from actually? Is it important? I don't, I'm a bit ignorant actually. I should have researched that before. What, like in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. I know in do they, they must import, right? I know in Dubai they actually have one of the world's biggest facilities for changing salt water okay. into drinking water. I don't know how they work in Saudi Arabia. Maybe yeah. the same thing. No, if that's the case, then that's cool. Then we can basically like use seawater in that for. But yeah. 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 Well. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense. Bro, so I was watching your Instagram today, yeah? Yeah. What happened today, man? Oh, today. You couldn't find your bag and I was just like, there was a bit of like a mindset thing going on. I was like, I like that, you know, it's just, you just said, you know what, I'm not going to let anything get in my way today. Today I woke up and I knew I had the conference. I've been looking forward to this conference for a long time. Mm. Um, it, was, it was a big deal. It was in the XL Arena. There were hundreds of people invited. We got captains and like pilots from around the world, senior management from Virgin Atlantic. And I was the, I was representing engineering that on, on this day. So mm. I woke up, I needed to send the guy an updated PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, yeah. Because I had made some changes last night and I woke up this morning and I just couldn't find my bag anywhere. Shit. And I spent 20 minutes. I, I should have left. I should have like left that, at that moment. And from that moment onwards, I spent 20 minutes looking for my mm. bag. I couldn't find my bag. And I was stressing out bears. And I was like, I'm setting myself up here potentially. I'm like, you know what? Whatever happens, today's going to be a good day. Mm. I, I looked, I went on my phone. I was like, all right, that's problem. So I went on my phone. I sent him like a copy from my phone. I was able to send it to him. And I was like, and then imagine I got to the train station. So I'm like, all right, it takes 35 minutes from the Jubilee line to get from Wembley to Greenwich. Mm. 35 minutes, perfect. I'll be there on time. I get to the train station, part suspended. Wow. It's closures. It takes me an hour and a bit to drive. So I, I was going to miss my slot. Wow. I called them up. I'm like, listen, can you rearrange my slots later in the day? Yeah, He's yeah. like, yeah, no problem. They moved one of the A380 captains early in the day. And as I was driving in, I was like, this could have potentially put me on such a wrong foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I'm about to go to speak to inspire people, I can't have been just spent a whole morning in a mm. negative bubble. Yeah, yeah. And then you go on there, what? And you're just going to put on a fake smile and pretend like everything's okay. Sometimes like a knock-on effect, right? It's like something goes wrong from the beginning and yeah. then it's just like... 
and then it just keeps like building up unless unless you break the cycle absolutely yeah. and from a knock-on effect you can imagine dominoes mm. so imagine like little dominoes start falling you need to at one point be like that's it all right that's yeah. that's the last domino i'm allowing to fall i'm in control from now onwards mm. and that was that moment in the car i was like up until this point it seems like the world's been against me mm. but from now on i'm back in control mm. it's almost like the whole thing of like not why me, but like try me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yes. on, come on. We do this, man. We do this. Bro, yeah. on a level, try me basically says that, you know what? No matter how hard the world is, I'm harder. Hmm. No matter what the world thinks it has up against me, hmm. you don't know who you're going up against. Hmm. That coming to life with that energy, it just sets you up for success. Yeah. Because no matter how many times you fall on your face, Try me. Up I again. love that. Up, and that's that's when you roll with the punches. That's I love when that. What did we speak about? What did we speak about? It was before we. So you know, airtime prime. Obviously, yeah. you've done an airtime prime episode before. So before we recorded, we we had a deep conversation beforehand. Was it before or after? It was just before. Yeah, yeah, it was just before, and, was just I, and before. then I left after that because I couldn't I couldn't be there. Yeah, I think yeah. I was at school talking about engineering. Before. You're always talking about engineering, <laughs> yeah. bro. <laughs> no, but I, I just got out talking to yeah. kids about their potential. Because these sort of mindsets that we're going to discuss today are things that we learn later on in life. Imagine mm. if we had learned that five years before. Mm. What could have our lives been like? But then learning is a choice, right? Like some people, some people can look at learning. And this is, this is where I'm a little bit like, I'm not stuck because obviously I work with young people. But sometimes I, I come across young people who like sometimes you can tell them as much knowledge as you want to mm. if they don't choose to take it in. And it's almost like, so, so I think there's, there's, there's another element to learning, right? I think there's an element of like, like I think relationships probably like one of the most important things when it comes to learning. Okay, relationships. Because, yeah, because so this is so let me let me put it this way. Yeah? yeah. So let's say you're watching someone on YouTube. Let's say like let's let's take Gary Vee for example. Yeah. Right. It's really funny because you actually might have built a relationship with Gary Vee. Obviously, you don't know him in person, but because you built that relationship from your side. Yeah. Without even realizing it, mm. that's why you're taking on that information mm. that he's sharing. Mm. So I think like relationships actually one of the key elements of like basically learning. Um, from someone else so it's it's the story else. you tell yourself inside your head in a situation where you don't know them let's take mm. it's the it's how they are appear to you so like look so like for example for instance if we have a better relationship yeah and the relationship doesn't have to be that like, sometimes just in in a weird way it doesn't have to be in person right mm. i can be following someone on, on internet you know and like, you feel like you know them yeah it's like yeah. A, i'm building a relationship from my side i feel like i know them and yeah. what they do and all of that stuff so then obviously, if I have a relationship with the person, yeah. I'm more likely to listen to what they got to say or the knowledge they, they, they got to share than someone I don't have a relationship with. And it's not necessarily true all the time because mm. I, I might just look at a piece of information, but I, I, still, I still choose if I want to take it on board or not. But what I'm saying is that for me to take something on board, a relationship would probably help doing so. It definitely would. Yeah. I, I guess it sets it up to be absorbed quicker, mm. but it doesn't, it's not, I guess it's not necessary, I don't think. Yeah. Because because there are some people who's first time you meet them, but they're dropping bars. They're like, right, I don't know this person, mm. but I'm getting to know them just by the mm. way they're saying. Um, and if I guess potential, there's a potential in there if you only take information from people you know. But then, but then, so then going back, then then you have a mindset. So you've set your mind in that way of like, regardless. So it's a choice you're making, regardless of who the person is, yeah. regardless of the relationship I have. Like I might still be able to learn something from them. I, I like to think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. I like because because if I look back at my own life, it was the people that I thought I'd learn nothing from mm. that I learned the most life changing things from. Wow. People who, from like from a cultural perspective, like I grew up um, in a Muslim household, mm. very much Muslim orientated, and to me, atheists mm. were presented to me as people I ain't learning nothing from because mm. I know and they don't. It wasn't until I joined when I was at uni and I met. Some people who, yeah, they were they didn't believe in a god, but mm. they, 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 the way they think about the th thought about the universe and about like living in the present moment and about being at, at peace with mm. the situation, I found that with them more than I did anyone else that I spoken to at the time. Yeah, and I, I found like so much solace in the way they approached meditation and the way they approached their thoughts and about how I'm gonna think positive and like only surrounding themselves with positivity. Mm. In that moment, like my life just started to change, but it started to change based upon people who 
like, I may not share. Yeah, people that you didn't have anything like, not, not necessarily anything in common, obviously you had a lot of other things in common, but yeah. you didn't have something in common in that kind of area at that time. Yeah, exactly. Really interesting. And, and yeah. the thing is, is that if I had come to that situation with a mindset of, are they atheists? So I'm not, I can't learn anything mm. from them, which I know a lot of people do. Like they just cancel them off because they think, oh, well, you don't know anything. Yeah. Then they're not, then you just missed a massive opportunity for learning. So how does, do you know what? So I, I know I know what my answer is, but how does someone change their mindset then? How does someone go, you know what? Like, I want to change my mindset towards something. It, with what perspective? Like, with what Just in, in, in anything. So I, I, can, I can give you my answer if you yeah. want. If, if okay, it helps yeah, yeah. Let's, let's hear what you have to say. So, so, I, so I think for me, this is going to sound really like weird, but I think for me, to, for someone to change their mindset is they have to change the mindset. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's just like it's like a it's like a weird kind of answer. So for example, like it's like how do you go that like how are you gonna go to the gym, mm. right? It's like you go to the gym. Yeah, it's true. Do yeah. you know what I'm trying to say? And, and I yeah. think and I think where a lot of people are flawed, they think that things are more complicated than mm. they are. So mm. they look for they try to create different steps. It's almost like they're trying to f themselves up. Yeah. By creating so many steps that's gonna get in the way of doing something. Okay. So you know how we, when you said if you want to go to the gym, how do you go to the gym? You just go to the gym. Mm. One person could argue, if you want to go to the gym, then what you need to do is you keep your shoes, your gym shoes and your gym your gym gear mm. visible mm. so that it's not hidden. That's like a practical step. And then don't, wor don't think about getting to the gym. Just think about putting your running shoes on and getting in your car and start driving towards the gym. Mm. Because once you've done that, the dominoes have started but then, to fall. But then, but then it's kind of like, but then you're in, in a way, what I'm hearing, I'm hearing something similar where like, you're talking about action. Yeah. So I'm hearing action. There's yeah. not too much thinking. So I think, and I guess that's where thinking gets in a way sometimes. Mm. And there's something beautiful about just like doing something, just N taking action. Now, but you say, how do you change your mindset? That's mm. only thinking. Hmm. But then, yeah. Then what, what's a mindset? Mindset is that how you set your mind, right? Yeah. So you, the decision someone makes. So for example, you said so someone someone might, you know, keep the things visible. Mm -hmm. So that's that will represent that they're gonna go to the gym for them. Yeah. So that's that's how they set their mind. Yeah. Someone else might do something different. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like everything is custom for everyone, really. It's at the true. end of the day. So how, what would what would be in your perspective the practical side to changing your mindset, or do you think it's that simple? If you want to change your mindset, you got to change your mindset. Yeah, I think just doing. I think doing. I think doing because I think doing creates experience. What would you do? What would I do? Yeah. Um, I would do what I'm not comfortable with doing. Okay. So for example, um, so it's almost like it's almost like doing the opposite. I'm checking the score by the way, it's just because it's, it's still one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. So it's almost like, like yeah, like I've had this thing of like what I used to do. If I felt uncomfortable with saying something, or I felt uncomfortable with doing something, I would do the opposite. I would mm. actually do it and mm. I've had a lot of learning from it mm. and I think that's what contributed to change my mindset because I've gained that experience of being uncomfortable with certain things give me an example um an example would be so for example I didn't want to bungee jump okay I didn't want to do it then I said you know what let me do the opposite I've got experience from it let's say I'm in a meeting and I might want to say something but I feel like maybe it's a bit too like too much out of like too aggressive or whatever but then I'll be like, you know, I'm not going to say it. But then I'll go, you know what? Let me do the opposite. And I say it. Mm. And what I've learned is that most of the time, the things I don't want to do created like some kind of beauty or some kind of like amazing experience that benefited me in, in, in way or another. It's really interesting. There's a there's actually a, a saying by like an Islamic sort of scholar back in the day, which says that if you are afraid in something, then throw yourself into it. Mm. In Arabic, it's إِذَا خِفْتَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ which literally means fall into it. Mm. It's as if, because when you say fall, it's insinuating it's not a choice. You kind of yeah, just, yeah. you shove yourself in no matter what. And that in, in psychology, there's something called exposure therapy, mm. where the more you're exposed to something, the less scary it becomes. So let's say I'm really afraid of horror movies. The way to get over that is to watch horror movies. Mm. Because the more I watch horror movies, Bluetooth less, disconnected. Yeah, I was like a horror movie right there. <laughs> yeah, the more the more technical difficulties and that. That's all good, man. The the more horror movies I watch, the less scary they will seem. Mm. Public speaking is the same way. Mm. You want to speak up in front of a crowd. Like today, I was there was a young pilot, twenty years old, right? This guy's a, a flight instructor, at twenty years old, 
and he's he's confident behind the, a wheel, like the plane. Mm. But I was I was chatting to him before the event. I was like, "Are you gonna speak?" He's like, "Oh, mm, I, I'm not sure he if they're gonna." Nervous and stuff. I'm not sure if they're gonna let me. He was using that excuse. I'm like, "Have you asked?" He's like, "Nah." I'm like, "Go ask. Get get on stage and say a few words." Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, but why?" I'm like, "Because the future, you will, they will gain you. something from it. You will gain something mm. from it." My man went on stage. Smashed it. He says he says something. He Seriously. was stuttering at the start, but after a while it got better. And it's it's the same thing where the more you expose yourself some, to something, mm. the, the less scary it becomes. So I guess I guess you know what? So I guess the the first step is always like basically turning up, or like the first step is like um, just kind of just doing the first thing mm. all the time. Because yeah. almost can, I guess and that's that's where people just get stuck, right? Yeah. It's just like in the they, thinking cycle. Yeah, they're gonna do it. They, they won't do it. So if they don't break the first one, yeah, they don't break the first cycle, then, then, then yeah, exactly. And only once you do, but that's it, what, that's what it comes down to. It do, comes yeah. up, but when it comes to mindset, I feel like there's something a bit different, hmm. personally. But so what do you what do you think about that? Then? When because when I feel like when it comes to mindset, the first person, my first step is, don't think you know everything. Hmm. You need to approach every situation thinking you're a novice. The moment you think you know stuff, you're missing out on opportunities to learn. Mm. Because you don't know who the person in front of you is, but not necessarily who they are, but what life experiences they have. Mm. What pieces of nuggets then, and wisdom they have. But then in a way, don't you think we'll still filter it through our own kind of like lens? Of course. of what they say. So sometimes it's almost like you can have the same conversation with the same person two different points in your life mm. but because maybe the lens that you've had at that time wasn't really fit for that person and then you know the lens the lens that you have a year later that you develop just like it's basically perfectly fit to it's take true. the information in, yeah. in kind of thing. in the same way you can read the same book twice in different times of your life and mm. you'll gain two very different things from it so we're taking a bit different all the time which is like quite deep yeah and it's profound it's just like we're not the same person that we're like 10 seconds ago Nah, <laughs> it's just like it's kind of mad if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's almost like we're constantly like developing, but evolving. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah where yeah. it's a constant evolution. And you know what's interesting, right? Um, you know the the US. I think they're the, uh, the not the Navy, but like the 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 Navy SEALs. Mm. The Navy SEALs are like the most elite versions of the Navy you'll get yeah. in the world. Like they're the most elite people from a military perspective. They have these when they're doing their training courses. They don't call them just like drills, mm. you doing burpees and stuff. They call them evolutions. Wow, that's really that's fascinating. Actually, I didn't know that. Because there's two things that I gain from that. First of all, it's survival of the fittest. Mm. That's what evolution is all about. Evolution is survival of the fittest. Mm. If you break in one of these evolutions, then you don't become a Navy SEAL. Mm. Yeah. Once you break. Do, do, do you think like in a way like I'm, 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 I don't want to disrupt the, the flow as well But do you think in a way Like that's the sad truth of the world Like I think in a way Like that's how the world's built I think the world's yeah. a bit more forgiving Yeah If you think that about the world Then you may The moment something goes wrong It, it breaks your cycle mm. But Listen to it not, So it, it link, it, The next point interweaves into that very nicely Is that Let's say you do break Alright Um or actually, let's say, let's say you don't break. Mm. Let's say you make it to the other side, mm. right? Survival of the fittest, and you made it through this evolution. You are now a different person coming out of that than you are stepping in. Mm. That is exactly what you were saying earlier about, I will do things if I'm afraid of them mm. because I will grow as a person. Like, it will shift me, it will change me as a person. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, going back to the point about, let's say you just, it breaks you, you can't make it through, you're out the door with it with the with the navy seals you're out the door mm. but with life you're out the door would be you die but we don't yeah. die when we get stuff wrong yeah but there's a potential to if your mindset's I mean, wrong if your mindset's wrong in that situation and you think oh, i just i just i screwed it up that's it yeah then your whole ambition the spirit is that's what die. some that's that's the thing I, f I love what you're saying as well so sometimes like the death is not literal sometimes it's, so no some yeah, yeah sometimes it's in the mind so like someone might get kicked out of navy so it's like it's almost like that 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 persona has died exactly that persona that was you know they made this image of like i'm gonna be part of navy seals and yeah. da -da 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 -da, they don't make it and then it died and it's almost like um there's there's always like a i always seen like a connection between like the image that the person is imagining of, imagining of themselves mm. and we don't they don't meet the image like they get depressed mm. i've always seen that connection between people getting depressed and the, the image they kind of create an expectation they have for themselves 
that I, I guess that that sort of interweaves into acceptance. Mm. I was doing some sort of uh, there's an app called Headspace which I I use. Yeah, I know Headspace. Yeah, and I was doing cool. like the the course about acceptance, and it said something really interesting. It said acceptance isn't something you do. Acceptance is when you stop resisting. Mm. So for this person who has this mental image in their head, it's it's more than just the fact that they're not accepting who they are. Mm. It's that they're resisting their current state with eyes on something else. Do you know what? He said something interesting. He said state. So acceptance is almost like a state as well. I think, and I don't know. Acceptance is a state. I guess acceptance as a concept has kind of been shifted in my eyes because now it's just stop resisting. Mm. And that means acceptance. Mm. E- embrace who you are right now. Because if you if you... It's such a fine balance though, isn't it? Yeah. Because then where's the room for personal development? If I'm just going to accept who I am right now. Mm. And some people can be like, oh, well, I, I need to constantly strive for this other persona and this other image. But as you mentioned earlier, if you do that, then there's a chance that you break yourself mentally because mm. I'm not that. And then what? So do you think, yeah, this, I think this is a really interesting conversation. So... I was watching something recently and I was talking about ego mm. and it's almost like if we, if we didn't have ego, like we wouldn't achieve things that we want to achieve. So it's almost like, you know, people talk about ego is not good, ego is bad, mm. but then it's almost like ego is the driver to get to certain places. I think it all yeah. depends on your definition of ego. Mm. I think potentially in that two people are defining ego in different th- ways mm. and to mean different things. So what's your definition of an ego? Um... I guess it's kind of like, I think for me, it's something that a person is trying to become subconsciously rather than consciously. So a person, so I guess it will be a combination of a person's values and kind of like beliefs and all these other things and where the person doesn't, it's it's almost like that a person wouldn't accept other people's like, kind of like values and other things basically just based so let's say let's say that if ego is a combination of different things that I have it in myself mm-hmm. and then someone else is someone else might challenge me and might challenge my my kind of values and different things that i've got within myself myself then yeah i just feel like yeah maybe i'm just waffling but that's that's what kind so of you're saying like. that your ego is sort of the build-up of who you believe you are and then when someone's challenging you, they're challenging yeah. that build up within you that is like, this is this is the, the persona that I've created within myself. Is yeah, that- so it's almost like there's yeah, it's almost like it, there's always gonna be. A, I think that in a weird way, I'm gonna describe this in a weird way. So the differences between people are the ego. The differences between people are the ego. So mm. what's the opposite of that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You told the me the differences within people. Tell me more. What do you mean by that? I don't know, it just came to my head now. The differences between people is the ego. Does that mean we yeah. are all one and it's the ego that sort of blocks us off from one another? No, I think, I think this is so fresh in my head right now. I think what I mean by that is that, is that, okay, cool. So, you know, when people, let's say I'm driving. Mm. Yeah, let's say I'm driving, right? Let's say someone cuts me off and then I might start like road raging and yeah. whatever. So yeah. that's kind of like, that's my ego coming out. Yes. Right? So, but the difference is, I mean, sorry, but the reason it's coming out because there's a difference between understanding, because obviously this person might actually be cutting me off for a reason. Mm. This person might be going to hospital or something or yeah. whatever's going on. But there's a difference in experience and difference in like values and other things and all of that other stuff. And I'm getting mad because this person is not having the same experience as me. I like and that. Th- does that make sense? That makes a lot I th- of sense. I think, I think I'm describing it a bit better now, but. That makes a lot of sense. Mm. Because, because then, let me let me let me see if I can like add on to it a little bit, right? Where if I'm if I'm sat behind the driver's seat, mm. I'm thinking to myself, "Do you know who I am, blood?" <laughs> yeah, this is, the, but this this yeah. is what I'm talking about, yeah. And it's me, 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 me. Whereas the other person's probably going through the exact same thing. Mm. Now, when I when they cut me off, and there's road rage, if I'm not willing to stop looking at just myself and look at the situation at hand instead and consider all variables. Mm. The fact that they're going to their hospital, the fact that they're doing this, the fact that they're doing that, all these different variables and stop looking at just myself and look at the situation as a true situation, mm. that is diminishing your ego. That's basically saying, I don't care who you think you are. In this situation, that doesn't matter. So there's, there's, almost a, there's like, a wider world than So e- ego, ego is self-centered and it's almost like ego, ego basically highlights that I'm more important than someone else. Yes, I am more important yeah, than someone yeah. else. 
And yeah. it's the same with when somebody brings up a different opinion to you, mm. your ego, which is me, me, me. Well, no, what do you mean? Psh, mm. you, nah, this is the way I think. These are my views. Who are you to oppose my views? So ego is very self-centered from that perspective. And I like mm. that that sort of road rage perspective because ultimately, if we were to just look at the truth mm. and the situation from from a, from an outsider's perspective, from a third eye perspective, mm. and we don't take into consideration that person or that person, a situation is just a situation. Yeah, it's just a thing that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how I choose to react to that situation is fueled by what I'm thinking about it. And if I'm thinking mm. about it from a self-centered perspective, which is completely egoic, then I'm just gonna get angry. I'm yeah, that's get... powerful, man. Do you, do you do you think um, ego is measured by empathy and your level of empathy? Because empathy is obviously how, how, like, not empathy, like, it's empathy and sympathy, that combination yeah. of empathy and sympathy. Because empathy and sympathy is, 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 is totally around how they feel, not how I feel. Mm. So the more sympathy and sympathy and empathy you have, the less of an ego, or less of a self-centered ego that you have, and vice versa. I th- Ooh, interesting. I really like that question. Um... Shall I think. Shall rephrase it? No, no, no. I completely understand where you're coming okay, from. Okay. I'm just trying to rephrase what I'm about yeah, yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, I get that. The amount of em- the amount of ego that you have, I think, has an has a, an impact directly on the amount of sympathy you're willing to show. I think. I think. I think it's the opposite. You know? No, because if I if I if I've been able to crush my ego, then I've created a space where I'm able to become more empathetic. Mm-hmm. I'm able to sympathize with you more. Because I've diminished my ego So the more ego I have The more I'm living mm. just in my own self The less chance I have of ever being sympathetic Because I'm not thinking about it You're myself. neglecting your sympathetic mind You're just saying, you know what, you don't matter I matter I matter And being, like, the only way to, to lessen that And to be more sympathetic Is by being more open-minded And being more understanding that There is more than one person in the world Exactly That kind of thing and looking at it from from an outside perspective. Mm. That's why e- re- removing your ego mm. is when you're able to zoom out from just being in your own head and just just, just observing your own mind. So I, like that, you know, I like I like that I like that that analogy. Zoom out. Zoom out. That's Honestly, sick, you know? it's zoom out because yeah, because like the moment you zoom out, you view your own mind as just another cog in the system, and mm. you see the whole thing. Mm, I love that. It's not just mm. you're not inside it. Like you, could, if you're inside this bowl then you're going to view the world as some warped like mm. thing because you're inside the bowl. Mm. But the moment you zoom out, you realize that the world ain't warped. Yeah, yeah. It's just because I was sat inside that bowl. The same with road rage. When you're in your ego, you're angry. Mm. How can you do that to me? But the moment you zoom out, you're like... It's, it's almost like come, it comes back to like a state of mind, right? And it's just like... Um, Yes, it's it's like one of my favorite things is, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but like nothing really matters. Mm. Like when I remind myself, like let's let's say I'm in a that situation, I'm road raging or whatever, and if I remind myself, well, nothing really matters, and it's not that deep. Like we're just the small piece in the whole, yeah. but significant at the same time. Yeah, very you know, significant. Very significant. So yeah. that statement has yeah. to be contextualized a little bit. Because mm. without context, then people always be like, "Nothing really matters." <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah you know, no, exactly. And you don't want to no, put that in that state. Like it's not a joke. But like, this is you know? so. So me and Aladdin, we had this conversation time ago, just before the pod started, and um, so there was this really interesting point that I was talking about. You know, for example, like people that are like, let's say, like super depressed, yeah, like super depressed, like mm. they don't get out of bed and stuff and whatever. Yeah. Like they would say that they think that nothing really matters, but mm. I beg to differ. I think I think the reason they're super depressed because things matter too much. So when people go like, you know what, nothing really matters. This it comes with a sense of freedom because mm. like I can still do what I want to do, but with that kind of like nothing really matters yeah. approach. So like, like let's playful say, approach to life. Yeah, yeah, if we're talking about public speaking, like yeah. I go and you know I kind of like I f it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then and then I go, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go to the next one. Exactly. And it's just there's a beauty of like you know kind of forgive. Yeah. Forgive the the you know yourself and what you're doing and just just nothing really matters. But and I don't mean it like give up. Like it's just. Nah. Do more things with a nothing matters approach. Yeah, and I think you know? if we if you live from a, a point of like inside your own head, the reason why everything matters is because you're the center of the universe in that state. So mm. when you mess up on stage, and you're the center of the universe, the whole mm. thing crumbles. Yeah, but 
people won't remember it. But no one, in, no one really in cares. Two hours, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Listen, have you ever nobody sat somewhere cares. and like someone's messing up the public? They're, they're saying they're saying something, but they're messing yeah. it up. Do you ever go like, oh, two days later, oh, remember that guy that was? No one cares. <laughs> no like one everyone cares. moved on. Yeah. But that guy that's messed it up, they're thinking about it for months. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, months. Yeah. So it's just almost how much, how much power. Are we given to certain events, you know? And can we remove some of that? Speaking of power, my mom, my mom always told me something really powerful. She says, who, who have you let hold the remote control for your emotions? Ooh. Ooh. What's that, Ooh, What's that, that is deep. <laughs> who that have you let deep. hold the remote control for your emotions? Take the batteries out, man. <laughs> take the batteries. Take, or just take, hold your own remote yeah, no, control. Yeah, hold your own. Just take out the batteries, man. Because because <laughs> the thing is, yeah, if you let somebody else hold that remote control, then they're just hmm. they're just they're just flicking through channels. Yeah, just and giving just, someone else the consent. And, and the thing is that when and to to come back to that same example, just to add context, hmm. when someone cuts in front of you, oh, your mom, your mom's a G, man. When you get angry, yeah. you've just handed over your remote control. Yeah, it's like yo, hold that, your hold that, just, and then press whatever yeah. you want, and I'm gonna react like a monkey. Yeah, that's what happens with police as well. When people get stopped and stuff, like they just give, they just go straight away, take my remote control. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. plus they they already got a certain level of like control, anyways. But then. Someone just giving them extra. They yeah. already came with their own remote, and it's yeah. just like, yo, get you know, take the yeah. extra remote. It's no, like, but so I've got, um, I want to, I want to, you, I want to, um, to hear your opinions on something I was thinking about the other day. Go on. Um, so it kind of some relation to what you were talking about. So it's like, we are lazy beings, right? Mm. Humans are lazy. Yeah. They're lazy, <laughs> nuts. Um, no, you're I, lazy, bro. <laughs> no? You're lazy. I'm, I'm human, now. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of, I kind of had this epiphany where I thought, we are so lazy that we would rather have the first emotion that comes to mind when something happens. So look at it this way, road rage, for example. The f- when someone cuts you off or whatever, yeah? I don't drive, so. That's bad for you, no. When someone cuts you off, the first emotion in the list of emotions is rage. And we are so lazy as beings that we choose the first one because that's the easy one to access, mm. you feel me? Where if you was more open-minded and more less lazy, you would start exploring different emotions. Can, can I say this slightly differently? So, so rather than just the emotion, it's almost like the lazy would be the reaction. So reacting would be the lazy kind of like thing to do. But like responding would be the, the, the one that would take more effort because yeah, you have to yeah. think about it. But the reaction would just be like a go-to. Yeah, the reaction is like the first thing that comes to mind is like the, quickest, yeah, yeah. the quickest result that you, that, that whatever. But like mm. a response, like you said, is like you need to actually put effort into coming up with a response. But speaking of lazy people, I'm actually grateful for some lazy people anyways. Yeah. So, so for example, like, so obviously where I live, I live on a fourth floor, yeah, and there's a lift, right? So the thing is, yeah, so every single time, so I take the stairs down, right? But because people are so lazy, they always take the lift to go downstairs. They don't take, they never take the stairs. They take the lift. Every time I come back, the lift is on the ground floor. <laughs> every single time. You know what they say? They say, the, they say the laziest person in the world is the guy that invented the washing machine because he couldn't be asked to wash it by hand. Mm. But then, like, I, I like to have this, I like to have this, um, I, like, cause I, like, I like to say lazy, being lazy is good when, when used in the right way, innit? So my like kind of metaphor, obviously it's not true, it's not like factual, but it's a metaphor. Whilst Isaac Newton was chilling under that tree before he discovered gravity, he had his clothes in the washing machine. You feel me? So like instead of having instead of like him hand washing his clothes, if he if there was no washing machine, obviously again it's a metaphor, it's not whatever. But if there was no washing machines, there wouldn't be discoveries nowadays. These discoveries that we're making nowadays is a result of us doing ha- saving time by doing things quicker, aka putting our clothes in the washing machine. Having our, our dishes in the in the dishwasher, etc. etc. So that's a result of being lazy. That's being lazy beings. This this puts a very good a very good point in the trajectory of. Um, I was once speaking to uh, a guy who was driving a bus at Heathrow Airport. He's you know when you go and you hire a car and they take you to the place where all the ki- cars yeah, are left. Yeah. He's spent the last ten years of his life just driving that car back and forth, right? And he was like, "What's this? All this automation coming along, taking our jobs? You know, typical like." Our robots are taking their jobs. I, and I can't believe that they're doing that. Way. Yeah, the thing is, is that the fact that we have a human being doing such a mindless job means there's a whole mind that has not fulfilled its potential. Mm. Wow, that's that's deep, man. Like who, people get angry because we're we're making robots take jobs. We're making robots take mindless jobs. But look, but because but also, the, there's such a there's a there's a beauty in that mind that could be released mm. in the world elsewhere. But I would I would argue that technology is not taking jobs away. Actually, I would argue that technology is creating jobs in because the creative at the end of the day, sense. Yeah, because exactly. like at the end of the day, someone's gonna have to maintain these robots. Someone's yeah. gonna have to design some of these things. Someone's yeah. gonna have to like do other things, like you know, like 
kind of like look after him all of that stuff yeah. like it's, it's, it's going to create something else absolutely you yeah. know so there's, it's almost like and i think do you know what it'd be nice to pull up the stats just to see like you know back in the day how many jobs you had back in the day and how many we do now mm. i almost guarantee and if someone can go on comments whatever challenge me but I almost guarantee we've got more jobs now than we ever had before and that's probably thanks to technology in first the place the thing that upsets me the most is the fact that we are beings that love saving time mm. and that's amazing we love saving time we're so good at it but it's the fact that we just don't use the time or a lot of us don't use the time well we use it on tiktok instagram yeah I mean, we keep ourselves busy. Instagram, yeah. Obviously, podcast BTS follow that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, we waste our time with being in limbo. So, so uh, someone Robin told me this recently. He said, when we watch movies or when we watch um, documentaries, or whatever, we're in a state of limbo because mm. we are being the the TV is thinking for us. Whereas when you're reading, obviously, you're doing most of the thinking. But the point I'm trying to make is that yeah, like you, you, what you were saying was amazing about how like robots are taking the, the mindless jobs so that we can be more creative. But really, truly, we're saving time because of that. For those who are creative to be creative, but at the same time, there's a lot of us who are not being creative, wasting time on mindless limbo activities, when in reality, we should be, all of us should be doing creative stuff. And it's upsetting, but... No. I always go back to the point, if it makes you happy, then do it. Yeah. If you feel like it adds value to your life, it makes you happy, then do it. If you... The only thing that, that could, somebody could argue that's a dangerous statement, because mm. what if it just makes me happy to be a lazy bum? On, on the that's, couch all that's day. good like, as long as you're happy then that's it man like I, I, I honestly but what like, value am I adding to say because you said makes no, you happy no, no, so but no, no, value no, no, so I'm, I'm saying if, if something's adding value to you you know yeah, what what, what what value is it adding to me when I'm just sat on the couch doing nothing well I don't know like that's the thing I can't relate but I'm just saying some people if for some people it's adding value yeah. and they're happy doing that then why not but I guarantee most people aren't people that, that are doing that they, they might pretend like they are, but they're not. But I don't know. But I'm just saying, like if if you know if some if something makes you happy, you know, then then why not? But I've got um I've got a question that Aladdin want, wanted me to ask you. Um, it's a very deep question, yeah. Go on, I'm ready. Yeah. Would you rather eat a baby goat, yeah, or a matter baby? A matter baby. What's that? Huh? What's a matter baby? <laughs> Nothing. What's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me, that was him. Don't look at me, that was him. That was all him. I'm pretty full for that. <laughs> no, you know that's a so good one. Um, before you continue, I, I really want you to tell a story, you know. Okay. I want you to tell us. <laughs> Mo's like, nah. <laughs> Mo just fell for that one. <laughs> nah, sorry. Because, because we're, we're more or less approaching the end. We've got like a couple, couple uh, whatever. But before we end, I really want you to tell the story of how your knee went backwards. Oh, right, that that's story. The, Leo, do you know that story? Of, of how his leg, whatever. Oh, nah. Leo, nah, Leo nah. wasn't there. I, I didn't hear about nah, oh, Yeah, please start, sorry. Okay, 16 years old. Mm. Um, my dad had entrusted me to go on holiday for the first time alone, ever. So I told him, Dad, listen, I'll look after myself, don't worry. So I... Uh, Where was he going? Uh, so I, was, uh, I went to Sweden, okay. skiing. My sister lives in Sweden, so I met up with her there. Obviously, the night before, I was excited, I was pumped. So I was watching bare YouTube videos about learning how to ski mm. so obviously first video is just getting into your skis skip past that one. Second video is how to go straight watch that one fully third video comes around how to break how to start slowing down i was feeling a bit tired so i was like you know what i'll watch this tomorrow morning closed it woke up the next day late as always rushed into my clothes get into my stuff you know get in the car excited boom going on the, on, the, on our journey on the way there get to the ski slopes slap on my skis Everyone's taking bare time in the shack, like, you know, in the chalet, mm. putting their skis on. I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm going up. super excited. I'm super excited. Mm. I went straight to the top of uh, the baby slope. <laughs> let's, let's put this into context it's here. Baby. The baby slope, <laughs> yeah. And I'm watching these kids going left, right, left, right. Like, psh, oh. Making it look easy. Mate, you know how many YouTube videos I've watched? <laughs> One and a half YouTube videos, yes? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> so without any instruction, nothing. I just start going straight down this mountain. Yeah. Mm. And I, I'm not. I'm not doing no lefts, no right. I'm gunning it straight down, all the way. Go down, go down, go down. Bang! I crash. I land. I open my eyes. Everything's right. Get up. Back on again. Straight up to the top. This time I'm more confident. So this time, as I start going down, I try and start doing the S shapes. <laughs> But it just ain't working. So I'm like, you know what? I know I've seen the Olympics. I know what they do. Put myself into a little One crouching and a half position. Video. Put them in a little crouch position. Start doing this mad. I start gaining bare speed. Wow. I start going fast. So fast. And the thing is that people are cutting across me, right? 
So as I wave my sticks trying to get them out of the way, I'm like, oh, I get out of the way, get out of the way. I do this, I lose my balance, about to fall backwards. By the time I regain my balance, I'm halfway up like this like ice part, like I'm all off track, mm. halfway up this like piece of ice and I just hit it, I fly through the air and I just, poof, I land. And I feel, I'm conscious, I'm awake. And then I'm trying to get up, but nothing's moving. And then I look to my right and I see that my leg has gone like this, like that. And then wow. my leg was sat on my shoulder. My ski boot oh my was, God. Shat on my, was, shat, was sat on my <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> pointing that way. Yeah. And I just looked down on my leg like that is Harry Potter. Crazy. You know how you see Harry Potter and they, his bones just like go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like that and like that. And I remember I was on my back. And that was a t- turning point in my life. Oh my God, man. Because I remember Did you black out? No. No. But I felt no pain. My body went into shock. Obviously, adrenaline and all of yeah, that. My, yeah, but I remember this was the most important part of this thing is that I remember there was a voice in my head that came out of nowhere that said, Mohammed, you've just broken your leg. <laughs> it, was like, it was like a Morgan Freeman type. You know what I mean? Like, Mohammed, you've broken your leg. You have two options. Either you panic or you just sort it out. And then poof, the voice just vanished. And I was like, mm. why would I panic? It's not going to fix anything. Why would I stress out? It's not going to do anything. I just sort it out. So I picked up my leg. I put it back where it should be. And I remember seeing a guy running up to me because he saw me go into the forest. He's like, you okay? Okay. I'm like, holding my leg. Looking <laughs> They're at like, him. yeah, bro. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, I broke my leg. Call it ambulance. Cool as can be. Like my sister was stressing out more than I was, bro. I was just sat on the ice, just chilling like that. That was a turning point in my life because I realized that when you're in a shitty situation, all you can do is deal with it. Mm. There's not much. There's, do you know what? Like this, I think... I think you're right. There's like, there's almost like there's two options, but there's only really one option. So what I mean by that is like, yeah. there's either like, either like you kind of deal with it, or you know you panic or you kind of like just go kind of like, yeah, yeah, just. But really and truly, the second is not really an option yeah. in my eyes. Like, yeah, it's not. It's not really. It an doesn't option. add so any one, value. Yeah, like it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do anything. anything. Yeah, doesn't does it add value? Can it can it add value to some extent? If it just digs you a deeper hole for yeah. emotion, like. Your, your hand in the remote control of your like emotions, let's say to speak, you're just throwing it away. You're not yeah. in control. Maybe the only value might serve, and this is just, I'm just thinking on a spot, like maybe just to kind of help you withdraw from the experience a bit more. What, when you're stressing out? No, I just like, maybe you might stress out, but then I guess like some people like, okay, so I'm not saying this is me, but like some people might actually go then start drinking for like a week or something. You know, like it's not mm. healthy, it's not sustainable, but it might help them for that period of time to just kind of cope with it. I don't know. I don't think it's an option. But I guess in an ideal, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just brainstorming. Yeah. In an ideal world, you wouldn't want to go there, but in a, yeah. in a world where we're all human beings, yeah. we all make mistakes. I think some people, I think some people do that, you know. Like, so I think you know, some people will stress out and stuff, and like I think, and I think that's what you know is beautiful. Because obviously, you're in a certain, you've got a certain type of mindset. Not every, not every other person is the same mm. as you, you know. And I think the fact that you can actually go out there and then kind of like share your mindset with other people. You know, one person might potentially listen to that and go, you know what, actually, that's a really good... Because you might, you might trigger something for another person. And I'm sure you've triggered a lot of different things for other people through, like, I social so. media and meeting people. I'm 100% sure. And I think... Um, so we had um, we had Jacob on this podcast before. And just just one of the points I wanted to kind of add from, from that podcast is that, you know, we said, like, sometimes, like, when we work with young people as well, and it's just, like, it just goes general with anyone. Like, we don't know what sort of impact we've made through, like, one conversation and stuff mm. like that. Funny enough, after that episode, three weeks later, I had a phone call from a young person. He was going to a Peru, like, next door to where yeah. I work. And he was calling me. He's like, yo, I remember we had a conversation two years ago when I was going to that school. Like, would you like to mentor me? Because you offered wow. to mentor him. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And that wow. was like two, three weeks later after that. And mm. I was like, wow, this is, you know, it's, like, true. it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And that happens all the time, um, just in general in life. And just, you won't know, you know. You know what's beautiful about that story? Is um, I once I was once watching a YouTube video, Jordan Peterson. And he was like, the world would not be complete without you. Mm. The universe, the whole world wouldn't be complete without you. And I think that, what you just described there is a personification of that statement because ev- that means everything that we do does matter mm. because we are we are us and the world or a system you are part of a system you are part mm. of something greater than what you are like you the sum of the collective is is greater than like the sum of the individuals like mm. everything that you do 
is done for a reason and you can change the world with your actions because you never know what that kid might go on to mentor another kid it's like a ripple and effect that, exactly and yeah. like when you drop a, a when you drop a little tiny stone into into water it's a tiny little stone but it it, it creates ripples all mm. the way around it and those ripples continue the ripples continue far and wide but the fact is is that your like, your life is important and the world won't be the same without mm. it when you treat your life like it's important you won't want to just sit on the couch mm. you'll want to get up and go and do things and message people and go out there and put yourself out there and ask questions and learn and question your ego and question your mindset and but it all comes down to the fact that your life is important in this world mm. the universe won't be the same without it and you alone can change the world so people that sit on a couch and I agree with you I think they might not think that their life is important no. and I think that's what I think that's the key yeah. I think that's what you're saying cuz cuz your life can change another life and if it changes another life and another life and another life yeah it's that domino effect that we spoke about earlier but yeah, in a positive yeah. sense it's like you do one thing that changes a kid's life you never know what that kid might go on to do mm. like it only took one person to to spark something within me mm. and then like that that atheist guy for example in uni who who sparked something within me mm. he doesn't know that now i've created like a social media page or that has like 5000 followers there and a tiktok with a 50000 followers here all of that came from one conversation back in uni mm. if he didn't think his life was important he would have probably never had that conversation mm. but Yeah, I'm saying the fact is those domino effects can really extrapolate quickly. Yeah, for sure. So all it takes you you hit that one person, that one time properly, you can, that person can change the world. So just try, just try create more domino effects. Really, exactly. Plant more seeds mm. is the way I like to think about it as well. Mm. I'm a plant a seed, and it might grow into a tree, which is so fertile that it it completely mm. like pop repopulates the whole world, or it might never grow. Yeah, but My duty is just to plant the seeds. Yeah, this is just just to do it, just to we have to just try. take that action, like you said. Cool. It's all about seeds, action, and so, doing stuff. So it's three no. Uh, England's winning three no. You, you already knew that, innit? Yeah, three no, Rock. which is great because I, I, I started two no at one point. I did. Um, I was last time I saw it was one no. That's how yeah. you know I don't care about football. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was gonna say, I was just gonna ask you lot, like, just so you know, this conversation is very intense, like mad powerful because there's a whole football game going on, like less than. Couple centimeters away from you, and you're too fixated on each other. Yeah, no, nah, definitely. I it would. helps because I don't care about football though. <laughs> yeah, me, me, I don't care about either. <laughs> he already knows that. <laughs> so, <laughs> he already knows that, anyways. But yeah, just now. Nah, but I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely fixated on the conversation as well. Um, so yeah, just to because we're coming, we're coming to an end now, anyways. And yeah. there's one question we like to ask every yes. single guest that comes on the show. Uh, Mo, are you a bull cat? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Shit, they got me. Nah. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just shout out to Gasworks. So it's whatever it's called, Alhan and Poet Show, whatever it's called now. But um, yeah. So the the question is, um, if you could say one thing to eight billion people, if eight billion people listen to you say one thing, yeah, what would it be? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think somebody else already said this on your podcast. Think about the way that you think. Mm. I think I think that was that, that was Jacob. I think it was Jacob. Yeah, it was Jacob. I was watching yeah. your clips. I think they I think that yeah. one's already been used. Think about the way that you think. Mm. Um I guess my secondary thing that out and the reason why that I feel like that's so powerful is because that changes everything. Mm. Because when you that's that's zooming that's out. That's the zooming out. That's the zooming about. out. Yeah, thinking yeah. about the way that you think. Um, I guess the second thing that I'll, I'd probably fall back on is, you are more powerful than you even know you are. Mm. I love that because it's the truth. You don't actually know how powerful you are, mm. and unless you treat yourself in the right way, you will never discover how mm. powerful you actually are. But there's so much potential hidden in there. To treat your life properly, treat your life like it matters. Mm. Make sure every single day you're taking a step closer towards being that person. And you have the power to change the world. I love that. And is there anything you'd like to promote uh, to the hundred people that's watching this? But not just hundred people, hundred amazing, incredible people. Hundred amazing yeah. people that decided to take their time to press follow and subscribe and and up here. Hundred exactly. percent. Um, I mean, I like to share sort of sort of my thought processes and anything that I think of. But not only that, behind the scenes of Heathrow Airport on mm. Instagram, TikTok, and, and the likes. 
uh, the tag is well the tag is motivate but you can find me by searching the airport guy mm. so yeah the airport guy but more than that actually you know what why did I do self promotion what I really want you to do is I really want you to pick up a book if you want if you like that concept of zooming out mm. read the book called the power of now I've, that's uh that's one of the first books that I've read that that kind of changed my life that's yeah. that's when that's when my journey kind of started into oh, the whole beautiful. yeah 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 honestly yeah. Forget the Instagram for now. Honestly, if you like the whole zoom out and talk about ego and trying to understand yourself yeah. and try and peel back the layers on who you are, read the power of now. Yeah. That is what that is what I'd say. Just read the power of now. Make sure you're in that the right mindset though, because some people read it in one ear out of the other. Mm. You kind of got to be in that vibe, but it has the potential to change life. It definitely changed mine. Yeah, and changed mine the as same. Well. Yeah. It's an incredible book. I'm yeah. surprised you mentioned it as well. I was I was expecting something else because not many people mentioned that book, but. It's a good book. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it. it changed my life, man. Bro, thanks for being. Thank you for having me. Thanks for me. being here, man. Thank you for having me.